100 peeps, this is Ken Colwood checking in from sunny southern Spain. Just dropping a quick use case video to highlight some of the cool features of the new Andre Pages Builder. Um, one of the things that my friend Thomas and I were most excited about when we saw all of the different things that were going to be possible with the new version uh, was the use of conditional blocks. And one of the first ideas that we had as soon as we saw that that was going to be on the menu was the ability to perhaps be able to create finally a survey funnel uh, inside of Entreport. So after a lot of experimentation and some of our own secret sauce, uh, we finally came up with a proof of concept that I've successfully deployed for one of our clients and it is working like gangbusters. Now, I don't know if you're in particular excited about the uh, idea of survey funnels or anything like that, but I know that some of our fellow consultants and uh, Entreport user community are definitely excited about it because I saw um, a couple of these posts in the community from people like Don Mars asking if this were something that were going to be possible uh, with the new Entreport pages. Now, before I get into a live example of exactly what this is, I want to run through kind of the anatomy of what we have set up. So that way you guys can give me some feedback on what you think would make this even more powerful or just some kind of ideas on how to perhaps streamline the process a little bit. Uh, so the first thing we have is we have all of the different custom fields that are going to be needed in order to um, tell the system which answers were given and then which tag to apply inside of the campaign. So you can see that here, each of these are just kind of the different questions that are going through. Um, I made really simple logic, uh, so that way we didn't have to uh, map anything out for this example uh, in LucidCharge or something like that. After the custom fields, uh, what happens is when somebody submits the form, they go through this campaign automation, which kind of just checks and says, all right, which survey result did they get? Number one, number two, number three, or number four. And then it goes ahead and it tags them as a consequence of the answers that they've given. Now it also removes all the other result tags. And what this is for is so that somebody who goes through the survey funnel multiple times, they won't get conflicting answers on the um, results page. After that, we went ahead and we set up the landing page that's going to be used. And this is kind of the anatomy of that landing page. Just all the nine questions we have, obviously uh, set up as drop downs, and then a last section that's email with a submit form here. After that, we have this redirect page, which sits, sits in the middle. Um, and I'll explain why we have this redirect page uh, a little bit later. And then finally, we have the results page. Now this is where the um, conditional blocks options come into play. So if we were to look at this page here, this is the survey results page, and it's not detecting that I have any tags. So what it does is it shows me this first block, right? This block here. And the way that works is that you just go in here to edit, go to display settings, and then you just uh, change the conditions as a result um, uh, or what you, of what you want to see. So this first block obviously gets shown if none of these tags exist, and the subsequent blocks is correspond to the different possibilities, right? So result one, result two, result three, and result four. Now, why did we have to do a sandwich page? Well, this is something that I think Entreport is working on uh, because I believe Landon ran into a problem or a similar problem uh, when he was trying to build a membership site on one of the template Tuesdays. And basically what happens is that Entreport needs a little bit extra time to be able to run through the campaign and the logics, even if on that first page, even if you have the setting to allow the campaign to run before redirecting, it needs just slightly bit, a slight bit more time. So what we found with testing is that 1.8 seconds seems to be um, the minimum amount of time you need to add in order for Entreport to be able to do its thing. And you'll, and you'll see this page in a second here. So let me jump to the live version of this. All right, so you can see that only question one appears. We go ahead and let's say we'll go to question two, question five, and you can see that the question number is changing here. Obviously in the live version, you can make it much more prominent. You can add additional elements or anything like that uh, as you move through, just to keep things kind of going for the person. And then let's say that we want end result four. Go ahead and I put in my email address. Click submit. It processes. 
Then it goes to the redirect page to add in that extra time. And then we get result number four. So there you have it, the working version of a prototype of a survey funnel. And on the contact record, you can see that it went ahead and populated all of these different answers, right? So we did question one, two, five, and eight, chose res end result four, and the campaign went ahead and tagged us as a result four as well. So yeah, I'm curious to hear your feedback on this and what you think uh, we can do to improve this. Um, and yeah, just to kind of get some general comments on uh, how you would use a survey funnel in your client's businesses or in your own lead generation campaigns. And yeah, I look forward to hearing what everybody has to say.